In section P.3 titled Linear Equations and Inequalities, we're going to review how to solve linear equations and linear inequalities in one variable. Uh, this will be no doubt material that you have seen and done in previous algebra courses, uh, so we're just going to jump right into examples um, solving these types of problems. In this first example, just a pretty standard linear equation to solve for the variable x. Uh, we're going to begin this problem with the distributive property. The negative sign distributed into this quantity and the negative 2 distributed into this quantity. So distributing multiplying by negative 1 makes negative x plus 5. The two negatives make positive there and it makes negative 2x plus 14. Again the two negatives multiply to make positive equals negative 2x plus 10. I like to go ahead and combine my like terms on the left hand side so negative 1 plus negative 2 more make negative 3x 5 and 14 make 19 that equals negative 2x plus 10. Now at this point in the problem I need to get all of my x's or whatever the variable is, all of my variable terms on one side and all of my non-variable terms on the other side. So I'm going to take the x and move it over to the left. I'm going to take the non-x, move it over to the right, and we do opposite operations to do that. So subtraction, the opposite of that is addition. I'm going to add 2x, and then I'm adding 19. The opposite of that is to subtract 19. So the positive negative 19 cancel, the negative 2x positive 2x cancels. And so we now have on this side combining like terms a negative x equals on this side a negative 9. Of course that negative x has a coefficient of negative 1 so we divide by negative 1 and we get x equals 9. This next example involves a linear equation with a fraction, or in this case, multiple fractions. Um, I'm going to begin a problem of this type by multiplying the entire equation by the common denominator. Uh, the common denominator is 6. I'm going to multiply everything by 6. Uh, now let me just write out what that looks like first. So I'm going to multiply the fraction on the left by 6. I'm going to multiply 6 times that 3. I'm going to multiply the 6 times that x over 2. And so you can see, and I'll even kind of highlight it, you can see that the entire equation is the same except I've got these 6's multiplied uh, to every term. Well now the terms that involve fractions should reduce. This 3 divides into this 6 two times. This 2 divides into this 6 three times. And now we can use distributive property. We can multiply what's left behind. So the 2 distributing makes 10x plus 4 equals here we've got the 18. And here we're going to have plus 3x. A much simpler looking equation to solve now just by utilizing that least common denominator. I'm going to move my x's over to the left. I'm going to move my non-x's over to the right. So the x's cancel there, the 4's cancel here, and the result is 7x equals 14 divide both sides by 7 giving me x equals 2. This next example we're going to look at a linear inequality. Uh, to begin with all the steps that we would do with the equations from before are the exact same that we're going to do with this inequality. So I'm going to begin this problem by distributing this negative 2 giving me negative 4x 
plus 2, it's plus because the two negatives multiply to positive. Minus 1 is greater than 3x minus 6. I do have some like terms here, so it becomes negative 4x plus 1 is greater than 3x minus 6. Okay, next I'll move terms around. This 3x, I'm going to subtract it to the left. This 1, I'm going to do its opposite, so I'm going to subtract it to the right. So the 3x's cancel, the 1's cancel, and we have negative 7x is greater than negative 7. Um, notice all the while all this work, this greater than symbol has stayed a greater than symbol. We have not moved it, flipped it, done anything with it. Um, at this point in solving the problem, when I solve using division to finish the problem, when I divide only if dividing by a negative number, and I did, I divided by negative 7, that's when we touch the inequality symbol. Because I divide by a negative, it flips. I get x is less than 1. Now, if you needed a number line, let's just show what our number line would look like. Okay. Um, I want all the values that are less than 1. So I'm going to use open circle at 1, less than goes to the left. Remember we use open circle for greater than or less than. We use closed circle for greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Okay, the equal to's make it closed. Um, now, interval notation, we typically always want to give that as well. The interval notation answer for this would be negative infinity to 1. And actually, this would be the preferred answer. Example 7, solving a double inequality. Uh, these show up quite often in, in our sometimes a source of confusion. When you have a double inequality, it of course represents two inequalities. The, the first inequality is the one on the left is negative 2 less than 3x minus 2 divided by 4. The other inequality is the one on the right 3x minus 2 divided by 4 is less than 4. Now if I were to solve both of these separately. Okay, if I wanted to solve them both separately, the first step in each of them would be to multiply by 4. All right, I would times by 4 to cancel that out. So I'd times this side by 4. I'd times by 4 to cancel that out. And I'd times this by 4. Uh, you know, next we can kind of see where this is going. I'd have minus 2's on both these, so I'd add 2 to both sides. I have 3x's on both these, I'd divide by 3 on both sides. Since it's all the same steps, um, and I'm not really into doing twice as much writing as necessary, I'm going to solve the double inequality. I'm going to solve the two problems at the same time uh, as the way it's set up. So I know I'm trying to solve for x. The x is being divided by 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo that divide by 4. So I multiply both sides by 4. And that cancels it out. So we end up with negative 8 less than 3x minus 2 less than 16. Okay, so now we have 3x minus 2. Uh, what I would do next is add 2 to both sides. Okay, so if I add 2, cancels out here, but I also have to add 2 over here, and I also have to add 2 to this side as well. So we get negative 6 less than 3x less than 18. Now we would of course divide by 3 to solve, but we had to do it to both problems, so we get both ends divided by 3. We get negative 2 is less than, 3's cancel, so 
x is less than 6. Okay, let's go ahead and show this one on a number line. Okay, I want all the x's that are, let's look at just this side first, I want all the x's less than 6. Open circle, less than 6 shades at this direction, and it's going to keep shading to the left. I also want all the x's greater than, bigger than negative 2. So that would be start at negative 2, shade to the right. You can see that the shadings on these are going to overlap. And that's exactly what the number line looks like. We don't go beyond on each of those. Um, so our interval notation answer would be negative 2 to 6.